Hey guys, um, Phil and Kenny here. We uh, are going to do a fast thought with Dominic today. Dominic, Dominic runs La Casa del Formaggio. Um, and what we thought we'd do is have a conversation with someone who is in deep on um, olive oil and quite a few of the different olive oils. By now, you've definitely heard um, you know, all of the conversations about olive oil and, and how expensive it's getting. And you probably felt it in your wallet. So what we thought we'd do is call someone who actually knows something about olive oil, um, not Kenny, because all he does is eat it. And then all I do is buy olive oil that Kenny tells me to buy. Yeah. Um, so, so both are kind of bad sources for information. So um, Dom, thanks for jumping on with us. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. Um, we, um, what we thought we'd do is maybe ask you a bunch of questions. Um, and some of them are kind of way, we do. um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and some new questions, I think, but, but things that, cause we feel like this olive oil thing, um, there's some nuances to this. Like, can, can you tell us a little bit about what is going on with olive oil? Cause all the pricing is going up. Everyone's kind of freaking out. Media has picked up on this, but as media does, they not this media, but just regular media. Uh, they tend <laughs> well, this to, media has been talking about it for the last ten months. Yeah, yeah I was going to say regular media. <laughs> regular media is a little late to the game. Yeah, <laughs> only about nine, ten months behind. It's all yeah. good, man. Yeah, yeah. Good investigative yeah. journalism. Do you, Do you mind telling us like what's 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 up with olive oil? Like what's going on there? There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, this is not just a recent development. This is stuff that's been going on for years. Um, you know, the pandemic started this whole thing, the Suez Canal before that or during that, you know, all those things really started the, um, the snowball effect of where we are today with olive oil. You know, uh, supply and demand is a huge part of it. Unfortunately, if you look in Europe, you know, if you want to contribute it to climate change or what have you, um, the weather in Europe has not been great, especially in the regions that are growing olives. Um, you know, there were fires a few years back. There were plagues, um, you know, like there was a, an insect what, that was just devastating fields in Italy, uh, specifically Puglia, which is the largest uh, area for growing half olives. Their trees. Half their trees. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in, in Spain, which is the largest producer in, in, um, in Europe, or at least in the EU, um, drought. Uh, drought has been a huge thing over the last uh, three, three years. You know, they have um, really cold early springs, and then all of a sudden they were pounded with a lot of heat. And basically what it did, it, it impacted the soil. So when it did rain, the soil uh, could not absorb a lot of the rain that fell. And so... You know, it's just life has not been good if you were an olive tree these last yeah. few years. And so what that's done is it impacts supply. And so, you know, the demand for olive oil globally is, is massive. So when you have supply issues, um, and then, like I said, you, you add the pandemic and the Suez Canal and supply chain issues, you know, people were having problems getting bottles. And so they had to buy different bottles or different cartons to pack. You know, it's just... It was one thing after another. I would say most recently now, it would be mostly the climate change, the the environment that that created really poor harvest the last three years. And typically a lot of the bulk olive oil producers store their olive oil in stainless steel containers. And I think at this time, those reserves have been pretty drained. Mm. And so you're basically dealing with um, fresh, the freshest of olive oil because they're getting whatever they can. Uh, I'm sure producers are looking outside of their regular regions, maybe looking at Tunisia, maybe looking at uh, places like that <clears throat> for olives so that they could crush mm -hmm. them and produce olive oil. But yeah, I think it's more of a supply, supply and demand issue due to climate change and weather and the other things well, that I talked about. countries, Dom, the countries that you're like, Tunisia, um, Turkey, if you look at Greece, it's always been a producer, but never as big as they probably could be. But, you know, when, when Spain had fires and droughts, Italy's got, you know, half the trees. Puglia does 40% of the Italian olive oil. Half the trees are dead. I mean, that's, that's catastrophic. <laughs> then you get Tunisia in those places where it was less expensive oil a couple years ago with the supply up. With that, yeah, well, I call the demand way up. 
it's, Price is going to go up. It's just crazy, right? It's the simplest supply and demand. And we've seen some pretty substantive price increases. Oh, huge. Like, and they keep on coming. Like every time we place a new order, there's a new price. Yeah. You know, and so we've gone from bringing in container loads to how many pallets do we need for the next few months, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's insanity, right? Really is. So what do, you know, because La Grata supplies a lot of retailers. Yeah. Um, and, and so there's kind of a, there's, there's definitely pressure, right? Like you, like there's the, there's the one side of all of this, like the, the consumers who are, are upset with kind of big grocers, like law laws and all that stuff. We're not worried about that, but we are worried because, you know, the average Canadian, you know, like they've seen their shopping baskets go up kind of 20, 30%. Right. So now we're adding all of oil to that. What do, do you have any advice for retailers that might be listening to this? Like, what do you, what do you do, you know, besides say, listen, I'm, I'm so sorry, but someone has to pay for half the trees in Puglia, right? Like, <laughs> you know what well, I mean? Like, like what, what do you, yeah, what do you yeah. do as a, as a retailer? Because that doesn't help, right? Like your consumer is either going to leave the store or they're going to do something that you really, you wouldn't want them to do. So I guess the, do you have any tips for retailers on what they could do a little bit different? Um, one of the things that I would focus probably on is, is to expand the offerings and look at other alternatives of oils, you know, uh, rice bran oil, grapeseed oil, those types of things that uh, will help complement uh, the pricing because they're an economical product. Um, you know, you can use that in combination with extra virgin olive oil, um, avocado oil is another one. Um, you know, the biggest thing that I would say that's um, not changed much is when you look at more smaller state premium olive oils, because these are smaller states, um, they didn't really get too affected by climate change. In some aspects, has actually helped in certain regions of Italy that got too much rain or, you know, they... they Sure. Welcome the drier weather. Um, but yeah, a lot of the small, smaller estate extra virgin premium oils, um, they haven't changed that much in pricing. Yes, they've gone up because of, you know, glass bottles and cartons and other things, transport, mm -hmm. the euro, whatever you there, you know, there's the regular stuff that uh, changes year to year to year. But the actual cost of the olive oil itself went up slightly, but not huge. And now, the difference between a more conventional extra virgin olive oil and a premium one, it's not far, far off. You know, if you're thinking a couple dollars more, it, it, you know, when, when you actually look at like a tablespoon of olive oil comparative, you're talking about what, 25, 50 cents per tablespoon, you know, and that's why I say if you want to try to maybe do a little bit more cooking with a rice bran, grapeseed oil or that, and then use a premium olive oil to kind of finish your dishes, right? So as a retailer, I would start focusing on that, trying to showcase premium um, estate olive oils, not going crazy, but offering two or three and putting them beside something like a rice bran or grapeseed. So that way, you know, Buy it, not buy one, get one, but you know, if you buy a premium olive oil, you get a discount on rice bran oil or something like that. Trying to build baskets for the retailers, but also giving the consumer an opportunity to to expand their pantry. You know, if you look in my kitchen, I've got all these different oils on my counter. You know, I, I'm a chef by trade. So for me, I love playing with olive oils and the different flavors, whether it's fruity, grassy, what have you, peppery um so yeah so we cook a lot with grapeseed oil and rice bran oil i'm italian so i don't think i'm ever going to go away from extra virgin olive oil i might use a little bit less but you know what we have been doing like i said is using more of a, a rice bran or non-extra virgin ol uh, olive oil uh, for cooking and yeah, then just yeah. finishing it with a beautiful premium olive oil premium olive oil has such robust flavors so you know you're not going to miss it you know, yeah. it's going to actually be more enhanced, in my opinion. I was telling my my, my my dad's Italian, so he grew up with it, right, obviously. But I was yeah. even telling my mom and dad, and, and friends who will, you know, when we talk about this, I tell them the same, is that 
when you're getting into premium or estate olives, yeah, you might be, let's say a one liter right now is 25 to 30 dollars, where it was, you know, anywhere from 12 to 17 two years ago. Right. Yeah. A premium 500 mil was 30 dollars two, three years ago. It's probably 35 now. Yeah. So, yes, you're getting half the volume at almost the same price. The difference is to get the flavor or um, the richness out of everyday olive oil, you might have to use four or five tablespoons in your salad. And then it's very oily. When you open a bottle of some of these premium, like a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half goes a long way. If anything, sure. you're probably going to use less olive oil. Yeah, probably actually save money. If you cook with it, fry with it, like you and I do, because we use olive oil in everything, like like mm. like and everything, right? It doesn't matter what it is; it's olive oil. Yeah. Less popcorn. It's the only thing that doesn't go olive oil. <laughs> but otherwise, I mean, even for us though, if if we stretch it that way, it's like I, I think great chefs all know the reason you use better ingredients is because you tend to use less of them, because typically the flavors and the robustness of the product is so far beyond a pedestrian anything in this case we're talking olive oil but well if you go to a fine fine dining white tablecloth restaurant do you think they're using the best of the best in the kitchen no yeah. they're using a conventional extra virgin olive oil if not a different type of olive oil or oil or cooking oil but on their tables always finishing with the good stuff yeah right and it enhances your dish yeah so i don't see why people at home shouldn't be doing anything differently yeah i agree then this goes on you know even when when everything stabilizes you know try different oils have fun with that so i i want to pick on that because um the fact that you're a chef there's some other bits in here right one is mm -hmm. so not italian in case you haven't noticed right oh really uh, kenny, oh, yeah, i know kenny's doing the darndest but um but not Italian. So the olive oil thing, I do it be, for health reasons, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not rooted to it. I can, I can move away. And you talked about a couple other ones. You talked about rice. Um, you talked yeah, about rice grape grape seed. oil, and grape grape seed. Seed oil. avocado so oil. What's the, um, you know, cause, cause I think the one that everyone knows, right? Like you, you, you know, when things get really bad, you know, you could go super cheap and go to like a canola oil, but you don't do it because um, you, you kind of want to stay alive and healthy. So, That's what um, economics. you know, so so you don't so you don't use it unless the economics really say that you, you have no other choices. Right. But what's yeah. what's the value of like a rice? Because I, I think rice for me is the most unusual avocado. I know I've used it before, um, but what's the like these? What are the alternative oils and, and what are kind of your best choices there? Yeah, so rice bran oil and grapeseed oil, I'd probably put on a similar Great playing seed. field. Yeah. Um, they're both considered somewhat neutral oils, neutral in the sense that they're very minimal in flavor. So right. whatever you put them in, you're not really going to taste the oil, whereas an extra virgin olive oil, you would definitely taste that. Yeah. Uh, the, excuse yeah. me, those flavors. Um, the other thing with those oils um, is they have a very, very high smoke point. So you can do popcorn with it. You can do stir yeah. fries. You can deep fry stuff with that. You know, uh, peanut oil is another one, really, really, really high smoke point, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are things that um, you could do it. I do find those oils are a little bit thinner in uh, viscosity. So if you're looking for a mouthfeel, again, that's why I lean towards using an extra virgin olive oil or an avocado oil. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the taste of cooked avocado oil. I find it gives a little bit of a, a bitterness to it that I just yeah. not a I'm huge fan of. Yeah. Uh, raw is fine. Like I eat avocados like nobody's business, <laughs> but when it comes down to the right. oil, um, yeah, I prefer it raw over a, a cooked product. However, a cooked avocado oil, uh, from my understanding, is it doesn't break down like a lot of other oils. So you could repeat fry with avocado oil over and over and over again. So as expensive as it is, you get a lot of use out of it. So it actually brings down the cost when you look at it from that uh, perspective. But yeah, those are, those are probably the three that I would focus on is the rice bran, uh, grapeseed, and avocado. Again, like you mentioned, there's sunflower, canola, but you know, depending on 
your stance on GMOs, whether you want to use those or not, that's completely up to you. They definitely have uses, you know, it's not on every single grocery store shelf for, for, for no reason. Right. So, um, but that, that's, um, I mean, that's kind of a big deal for retailers to be thinking about, right. Is when you, when you start seeing some of that, um, you know, whether they're empty shells because you can't get the olive oils that you're used to buying or you're just not seeing it move, right? Like being able to sub in um, a rice, um, a grapeseed oil, it's a nice, and then there is some education that needs to be done, right? Cause I think, you know, I feel like most people might know grapeseed, but rice oil might be a really, um, a few restaurants right? that, there's a few restaurants yeah. that we know of that actually use it. It's same from Don's point, the flat point is high. Like you can yeah. actually, you can cook on higher heat. Like what I, the reason I actually use it for popcorn pretty much exclusively is I'm not a big fan of the GMOs that we have with a lot of the other yeah. ones, but it's just, there's no taste, no smell. Yeah. It's a big deal to me. Like I love the taste of olive oil. I love the smell. I love everything about olive oil. So I, I have no. Actually, I'm thinking that. about sweet and sour. When I, not to like complete the, the sweet and sour, it would be killer nice because you wouldn't, it, it's, yeah. it, there's nice no. Smell. Right, yeah. and you don't get that that yeah, the no side gonna, flavor, yeah. no, nothing. I get a mask. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. Interesting. One thing I did see in my travels was uh, a sunflower and extra virgin olive oil blend in a bottle. Um, I'm not a big proponent of that. You know, I'm either going to use the sunflower or I'm going to use an extra right. virgin. So if somebody's already blended it for me, yeah, it brings down the price of it, but. I don't know. I, I like to make my own decisions on how I use things. So that's something that I would lean away from. Have you from. mixed oils? So let me ask you that because I've done that. Like I've used at times, like I've done, you know, butter is a little higher flash point than olive oil. I've done butter and olive oil. I have put where I've wanted the viscosity a little higher. I've used maybe a little more base of rice and then added olive just to get some flavor out of it. Where you're trying to stretch on certain things, especially if it's more of a frying frying, like a harder frying. Well, just to be clear, clarified butter is a higher- Clarified, yes. Because the milk powder is brown a otherwise, butter and butter brown, brown, brown. brown. Yeah. Right. Um, Got it. But yeah, I know, I, I've never, I've never, I've never blended oils. Like unless like I, I'm out of one and I need to just finish right. a dish, then I'll grab something just to finish it. Mm -hmm. But no, like I try to utilize, like I said, my pantry is filled with so many different oils right. that I try to use them for what I got them for, right? right. If I want to make, let's say, uh, a garlic oil or something like that, you know, typically I would do an extra virgin, but if you really wanted to get a very potent one, you could put it in a rice bread or right. a great seed oil that has a more neutral it's flavor. Great carrier. It's a great carrier, but for me, I like the mouth feel and, mm -hmm. and that of extra mm -hmm. right. virgin olive oil. Right. So, and mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of flavored oils, like a chili yeah. oil, great. Um, yeah. yeah. But I could also put extra virgin olive oil and chili peppers on my. I'd rather do that. Too. So, you know, it all depends. It all depends. Yeah. Awesome. Um, that is it for us. That's the, we wanted to. We covered a whole chunk of questions. I I wanted we have been talking about this olive oil thing for a while and then it, it's come up in the news. So we thought we just, rather than just two knuckleheads talk about this, we thought we'd actually talk to someone who knew what they were talking about. Um, so thank you. Thank you for jumping on and, and doing this with us. If there's retailers that want to reach out to you, let's say they do have um, yeah. questions, how That's would they do that, Don? But what's the best way to find you? Yeah. No phone um, numbers because people will do it. Don't do phone numbers. No, no, they can, I, they can go to our website and reach out to us. Um, probably through LinkedIn is another method that they could get through to uh, to our sales team or to to our office in general. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, we will put all your links in the uh, in the the um, YouTube yeah. links below. Um, Perfect. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. Thanks again for the invite. Appreciate it. All good, buddy boy. Looks good. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, man. You too. Thanks. Cheers.